This is an IGET concept module on spectral signatures written and narrated by Michelle Kinzel. When we talk about remote sensing, we're referring to the activities of recur recording, observing, and perceiving or sensing objects or events at faraway remote places. In remote sensing, the sensors are not in direct contact with the objects or events being observed. For the purposes of academia and this presentation, remote sensing refers to the collection of various portions of the electromagnetic spectrum by satellites or sensors orbiting the Earth. In this way, we can monitor various environmental aspects of our Earth's ecosystems. If we define a spectral signature as the pattern of electromagnetic radiation that identifies a chemical or compound, we can display this pattern on an XY graph of wavelength versus reflectance. On the x-axis you will see the wavelength in micrometer and it includes portions of the visible near infrared and short infrared wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum. On the y-axis is the percent reflectance. The colored curves represent the unique spectral signatures of three different objects with the red line showing corn, the dashed green line showing tulip poplar, and the dashed blue line showing soybean. There are specific areas of the graph that indicate chlorophyll absorption where the reflectance is relatively low and also water absorption where the reflectance is relatively low. If we consider the nature of vegetation, a healthy leaf is going to absorb most of the red and the blue portions of the visible light spectrum shown here in red and blue arrows as that is where photosynthesis primarily occurs. Most of the green portion of the visible light spectrum is reflected as is the infrared portion of the electromagnetic spectrum which is represented by a white arrow here. This difference in reflection and absorption also occurs in other objects and materials in the environment. If we consider this scene that includes a coastal area with some shallow water, coral reefs, open water, land, and developed areas, we could see that they are going to reflect and absorb portions of the electromagnetic spectrum in unique ways. So this shallow coral reef area is going to have a different spectral signature than this open water area. And that would also be different from the land that is shown in this portion of the image as well as a unique spectral signature for the developed portion shown here. The electromagnetic spectrum can be represented in many different ways, but the information is always the same. In this example, the wavelengths are shown from largest to smallest and measure from meters to nanometers. And the yellow portion that is highlighted here is the most useful in, in remote sensing and includes microwaves, infrared, visible light, and ultraviolet energy. In addition to the ultraviolet, visible, and infrared region, remote sensing also uses microwaves and LIDAR, and that is generally considered to be active remote sensing, where the energy is created and sent out by the sensor. The other portions of remote sensing rely on passive collection of energy moving through the environment. The concept of spectral signature is another name for the plot of the variations of reflected or absorbed electromagnetic radiation. Here we have another curve showing wavelength on the x-axis and a percent reflectance on the y-axis. And You can clearly see that at the very top the red curve is representing snow and ice, the blue curve is representing clouds, and these are unique and distinct, as are the two different types of vegetation, broadleaf and needleleaf vegetation. There's also shown a difference between dry soil and wet soil. And then at the bottom, with the lowest relative reflectance, we have turbid water versus clear water. This is useful for identifying and separating different materials or objects using multispectral data obtained by remote sensors. 
if we consider the graph that we've seen previously and we look again we can see that we are getting not only information about the spectral curves for the objects but also the portions of the spectrum where they have low reflectance which means that they have the concurrent high absorption and that lets us know how these objects are behaving in a biological sense. If we consider our wavelength versus reflectance that we've seen before and we add information about the bands in which the information was collected, we can begin to understand how satellite images and satellite products work. So the bands here are represented by the the three rectangular polygons that are shown behind the curves of objects. And so band one was collected in the blue portion of the of the um, is shown in blue and it was collected in the green portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Band two is shown in green was collected in the visible red and band three is actually collected in the infrared portion of the electromagnetic spectrum and is represented here in the color red. You can see again that snow behaves differently than limestone which is different from sand or vegetation, dry soil or water, all of which have those unique curves that help us identify objects. The Landsat TM channels and sample spectral curves are shown here. We have bands 1 through 4 and they are showing you the portions of the electromagnetic spectrum that they are collecting information from. So Landsat collects information in, in the bands from these different wavelengths and when this information is analyzed with digital software it produces spectral signature curves. Here are some questions for you to use in order to consider the information presented here on spectral signatures. Here are two more questions in order for you to consider spectral signatures. And for the teachers, there is an answer key on thinking critically. These are the same questions you've just seen with answers provided. and the answer key for the last two questions. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation on spectral signatures and these are some references which were useful in putting together this short overview of spectral signatures.